Hey everybody, I'm Todd and this is Sweet Tea you Get Tires. Welcome to a Tools and Tips video. Alright you guys, I've been thinking about doing this for quite some time now and I told you guys in a previous video that I was going to start coming at guitar building from a slightly different angle. I want to give you guys useful information. I want to stay relevant on the channel. I want to grow and I want to help you guys learn how to build a guitar while I learn myself. I feel like I already try to share all the knowledge that I gain with you guys already. But sometimes in the context of a guitar build, I could do a little better job at delivering some information to you guys in a more concise manner. So I've decided to do these tools and tips videos to try and pinpoint some issues, show you guys how I go about things, and maybe all of us can learn something together. In this video, what we're going to do, I've got eight Narex chisels up here on my magnet wall. We're going to pretend that those chisels just got here. I'm just taking them out of the box. I'm going to show you guys how to take a chisel from factory condition to razor sharp guitar building ready condition because contrary to popular belief, they do not come to you prepared for use. There are things you need to do to even the best highest quality chisels before you use them. There's plenty of people that make killer, killer chisels and gouges. Narex is just one of the companies. I think for the money though, Narex has got it going on you guys. So if you're looking to get into guitar building and you want some quality chisels that won't break you, Narex is a good way to go. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's get rolling. I've educated myself on this, you guys. You know how I am if you're a frequent visitor to the channel. You know that anything I need to find out, I go learn it, then I share it with you guys. That's what I do. Um, we're going to start off by blocking down and getting these sharpening stones flat. This right here is a stone I got from Amazon, and it served me well. This is a 400-1000 combination stone. We're going to flatten this stone up nice on both sides first. We'll get all three of these stones that we're using for this process nice and flat. I'm just going to take this Nagra stone, is what they call these. And this is a lapping stone or a flattening stone. This came with my stone kit that I got from Amazon. We're just going to take this. I want to make sure we're starting with a nice flat surface. We're going to flip this over. We'll do the 400 side after the 1000. That way I know I'm not contaminating the higher grit stone with the lower grit material. Let's flatten the 400 side. You look on there and you can see where if you've got a groove or anything like that, you can look down at the stone and see where the water is actually starting to lay. And you can tell that's got a nice clean surface perfectly flat. Now we're going to go to the 3,000-8,000 grit combination stone right here and flatten it out. You can tell this thing's been sitting in just a little water and it's gotten some staining on it or whatever. That's about to be gone. Let's start with the 8,000 grit stone first and we need to make sure we start with this flattening stone perfectly clean. And as stained as this thing was, this one will be easy to tell when we've got a nice flat surface. Don't want to go overboard because we are removing material from our stone. Let's hit this 3000 side. This is a Suhiro stone from Japan, um, a combination 320-800 grit. We're going to need this to establish that initial bevel. We'll do the 800 grit side first. This is a ceramic whetstone here. Beautiful flat surface on these. I love these ceramic stones. They do a fantastic job at cutting. Super clean. And let's catch this eight, uh, the 320 grit side. 
And on this particular stone, we're not going to rinse that slurry away. To start with, I'm going to take this 320 grit side. We're going to start with our widest chisel, which is a 26 millimeter Narex right here. And what we want to do is flatten the back. You may be able to see it better right there. We don't need to flatten this whole area. What we want to flatten is about the first inch and a half, two inches of the back of this thing. Basically a little less than our stone is wide. So let's take some water that I've got mixed up in a bottle right here with just a little dishwashing detergent that acts as an extra lubricant. We're gonna wet this stone down. Blade down first, then go to your point. I like to work it at an angle. I'm not putting an excessive amount of pressure downwards, you guys. I'm letting the stone do the work. We'll store these over here. Next, we'll go to our 20 millimeter. A little more water. We want to keep that slurry intact. Again, place the chisel down this way, then lower your point. Let's go just about 10 more strokes. There we go, it looks way better. So unlike a plain blade, we want the back of our chisel completely flat. We do not want to create a bevel on the back of the, on the, back of the chisel blade. And these chisels have never been properly flattened since I got them. These things are gonna work gloriously now. This chisel has seen the least amount of use because it's the newest one. I bought it after the fact, this crank neck. But I love it. It's fast become one of my favorite tools in the shop, actually. That's what we're looking for right there, is a consistent scratch pattern all the way across the area that we're honing on. And that looks really good. And the smaller these get, the harder this becomes to hold these things flat. So you want to back off the pressure on these, on these more narrow chisels. May take you a little longer, but in the end, that does not matter because once we do this, we won't have to flatten the back of these chisels for quite some time. We can just put a new micro bevel on here and continue to use this thing for, you know, a long time. Notice how I'm not holding my hand back here on the handle. I'm laying my fingers down like this. I do not want to lift that up like that. You don't want to lift the chisel up because that'll create a back bevel. Now we've got our 800 grit side and we're going to do the same exact thing to all seven of these chisels. I'll go ahead and finish up all these chisels getting the backs flat and I'm going to carry those up from this 800 grit we will go to a 3000 then to an 8000. After that, we'll meet back here and we'll start to regrind the primary bevel on these chisels. I've went ahead and taken my 26 millimeter chisel and went ahead and ground the new 25 degree bevel on the front side. And the reason I've done that and not shown you guys that is because it took me quite a long time. So how I found that angle, let's pan down here and I'll show you guys. I've got a digital angle finder that I got on Amazon. I think I paid $22 for this little thing. I set it down on my granite block. I hit zero, which means now this granite surface is at zero degrees as far as that thing is concerned. I put my chisel in my honing guide, press that down level with the table, and it's actually at 24.5, but that's good, you know, that's good enough. 24.5 degrees. What I've done now is made myself what they refer to as a protrusion stop block. And I've got one block on here so far at 25 degrees. If I mount any chisel or plane blade up and I butt it up against this edge in this honing guide, it's going to touch that block right there. That lets me know I'm at 25 degrees. We need to grind all these faces 
back on the front of these chisels and get our primary bevel set back to 25 degrees if they're off at all. Now I know the 26 millimeter one was, so that's why I did that. I wanna be super careful with this edge right now because even though we don't have a micro bevel on it, it will absolutely shave the hair off your arm. It's super, super sharp. So next is our 20 millimeter. I wanna be really careful not to bump this edge. I'm gonna butt this up against here, upside down. We'll get our chisel tight in there, but still able to move and check it and make sure we're flat up against the bed of our honing guide, and we are. Another way to check this, you guys, if you don't have an angle finder and you want to stay at your primary bevel whatever it comes from the factory and you've got one of these honing guides which i highly recommend this is a saker they make a bunch of different versions of this thing i like this one because it's got a wide wheel and that stabilizes this thing a little better but to keep your factory primary bevel you can always take a ruler set it up against your wheel and run it down that and see if you're at that same bevel. Adjust your chisel so your ruler is riding flat on your bevel. And as you can see, NARX has ground a 25 degree bevel in that. That's perfect. So you can always use this method if you don't have an angle finder. We'll use the 800 grit side and then we'll go straight from 800 to 3000. So let's flatten off this stone here. This is our 800 grit side. All right, again, I'll leave the slurry. I can tell this one's going to require some work. I may need to turn it back over and grind this on our 320 side. Let's hit it a few swipes on our 320. As you can see, I've gotten my chisel out around trying to learn to freehand sharpen. So what we're going to do is bring that back. Our stone's flat. We're mounted geometrically correct inside of our honing guide. This is another thing that will help you out so much if you get one of these honing guides. You won't wind up with a chisel edge that's not square to the sides. And that's really important on a plane blade. I'm applying not much pressure downwards, but as you can see, we're already starting to pull that primary bevel back into focus and this side I need to apply a little bit more pressure to this side I'm left-handed so I've got a tendency to put more pressure on my left side so how I correct for that is just move my left hand up behind my right and we'll just take a few swipes that way do about 25 30 swipes at a time no more than that because you don't want to remove any more material than you have to now, once we cut this primary bevel back on here, as long as we use that protrusion stop block that I made at 25 degrees, with this honing guide, these stones, this protrusion block, we will get repeatable results time after time after time. We can put a new edge on this chisel in less than a minute. Once we get through with this hours of work we've got to do to get these chisels honed in. I want to start taking the maintenance of my tools and things like that um, a little bit more seriously. And I want to get at least get everything in the shape it needs to be in to achieve perfect results. Then that way I can't blame the tool. It's all on me. Yeah, 25, 30 more swipes and we'll have it have a new primary bevel ground at 25 degrees. Now we could literally stop this process at 320 grit if we wanted, but I wanna go ahead and polish up our primary bevel and take it all the way up to 8,000 grit and even run it across the strop a few times um, to get a nice polished edge. That makes your tool look better. So you can see that now we're good. Let's go ahead and flip this stone over. We'll go to the 800 side. So you can see what kind of quality edge we're getting now. That's perfect. So while we've got the chisel on this 800 side, and I know we've pulled a burr on the back of here, I can feel it. 
let's take and just run this a few times across our stone on the back to make sure we keep that burr off of there. We're going to go to our 3,000, 8,000 grit stone. We're getting to the point to where this process is going to speed up. But I'll do them one at a time here because I can go ahead and keep this locked into the, to the honing guide at 25 degrees and not have to unmount the chisel from it. And we'll just go ahead and go through the whole process on each one of these. So we're on the 3,000 grit side. I'm just going to keep showing you guys this edge. That's a nice, nice edge right there. All right, let's flip this over. We're going straight from the 3,000 to the 8,000 grit. And when you go to use a honing guide, you don't want to go in blade first and then do that. You want to set your wheel down, lower your surface to meet the stone, then start your, your polishing. In this case, we're at 8,000 grit stone. This is not grinding anymore. This is polishing. Oh yeah, look at that polish, you guys. Already, I could absolutely stop there and build guitars with this chisel, but we're not going to do that. We're going to bring our leather strop. I've got a piece of leather mounted to a hard piece of maple right here. We're going to take a little Lucas Extreme Duty Gun Oil, and I've got some 3-in-1 oil blended in with this. We're going to apply a few drops. We'll spread that around. This is Manzerna metal polish right here. I'm going to take a little of this. And we'll do the same thing we did with the oil. We'll get some down into this leather. And this is taking the chisel to the next level, you guys. Wheel first, face of the chisel. I go in one direction because leather does give. If we go forward, we're going to wrap the leather around the front of our sharp edge and that has a tendency to want to dull it about 10 strokes backwards look at that right there there we go i'm sure i've got a burr on the back of here we're going to take the chisel we're going to lay it down bring the tip to the surface and very little pressure just the weight of your hands Drag that backwards just a couple of times. And what you're doing at that point is getting that burr off of that front edge. That is a sharp chisel right there, you guys. Same setup. We're going to go to our three quarter inch crank neck now. Wheel down first, face down next. I'll mount up the 16 millimeter um, in the honing guide and we'll start getting that done. I'll pause for a minute until we get to the point where I create the micro bevel. You guys have seen me do this at this point and you know what we're doing. So I've done my 26, my 20, and my three quarter inch crank neck chisel already. I've put a micro bevel or a secondary bevel on those already. It's literally going to cut your sharpening time in half by doing a secondary bevel. So let me show you guys what I've done here. On this protrusion stop that I've made, I went back and made myself a 30 degree. And I did the same thing with the digital angle finder. I zeroed it out on my granite plate, raised the chisel up to 30 degrees. I set that in my honing guide and then I glued that block down to this board. Now all we have to do, run it up to 30, just like so. We're going to go 1,000, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And I'm going to show you guys this. A primary at 25, a secondary at 30 degrees. You saw that, you guys. All I had on there was a 25-degree primary bevel. 
and we only have to sharpen that little 30 second of an inch or half millimeter line we've got right there. That's all we have to sharpen the next few times we sharpen this chisel. We'll level it out on the back to get rid of the burr. We'll go to our 8,000 grit stone, just like so. Lube it up good with water. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now, we've got an 8,000 grit polished secondary bevel. And now we're gonna go one step further. We're gonna take it over to the strop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very little pressure. Now we've got a mirror finished secondary bevel on there. Very, very gently. Tail down first, then the head lightly drag it backwards. Just about three times, just to any little micro burr you've got on there. And I promise you guys, this chisel right here is as sharp as can be and i'm actually going to treat the handles with some of steve McElhenney's mad scientist hard oil and wax system number seven um, this is a finishing product that i get from maximum guitar works they make a penetrating oil as well but this stuff right here is great it smells good and it will get down in those handles and really protect those handles I'm just gonna use this hard wax oil for the whole thing, metal and all. And I'm a fan of everything Steve makes and Maximum Guitar Works. I'm just gonna get this rag good and saturated with it. We'll just use this to wipe these handles and the metal itself down. This stuff smells like citrus. This will give these handles and these blades a nice coat. A really nice protective layer. Okay, I'm going to let that sit there and stiffen up for just a moment. When we come back, we'll buff those down. I'll hang them up and we'll call it a night, you guys. I'll be right back. All right, you guys, it's been about 10 or 15 minutes. Actually, I'm going to put some gloves on so I don't touch the blades with my fingers because your finger oils will cause the metal to rust. All right, you guys, and that is how I sharpen chisels. I really hope you got something out of this video. I'm gonna be doing a few of these from time to time. In the next episode of the Tools and Tips series, I'm gonna do exactly what we just got through doing to all my hand plane blades. So you guys stick around here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can stay up to date as I release these tools and tips videos that I'm doing here on the channel, as well as all my build videos that I'm planning on doing. Don't forget to head over to Geo's. You guys know the deal. Give Geo a thumbs up and a subscribe while you're there. I'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, peace and love.